Hello, it's John here again. Um, this is part three of a simple physics engine for the 6502 and using on the 64 and Vic 20. And in this episode, well, let's just recap. In the previous two episodes, we was talking about how um, altitude and vertical velocity can be changed based around a gravity value and the amount of time it takes for that to go down. And in the previous examples we did a working model of a simple gravity physics engine. And in this one, in this episode, we are going to add the element of thrust. Now with the with a thrust value you've got to make sure the thrust value is uh, bigger than the gravity value because if you make the thr thrust value the same value as gravity all that will ever happen is you will you will keep constant the rate of fall against gravity so if you have a gravity of five kilometers an hour and you've got thrust equivalent to five kilometers an hour you will keep the vertical velocity exactly the same because gravity and thrust cancels out. So what you need to do is you need to make thrust bigger than gravity. Now, depending on how you want the physics engine to work, you could have thrust which is slightly bigger than gravity, which means that your vertical velocity when you apply thrust slows down at a slower rate or decreases at a slower rate or you can have velocity which is in this case twice as big which means your your vertical velocity will either increase um, a lot quicker and decrease a lot quicker so if we go into our uh, example here is the example from the previous um, example where we've just got velocity at uh, sorry gravity at five um, units per measure and then we just run through it and we check the limits to make sure that we don't go too fast or uh, in either direction and we just monitor it as we go along so with thrust we need to as we did with gravity we need to add a constant so so we'll just add a constant here so now what we're saying is thrust is going to be 10 units per time frame so if you start at zero and you add and you subtract if you have a vertical velocity of zero and you subtract gravity from it that'll be minus five but then you add the thrust which was plus 10 which means you've got an overall vertical velocity as plus 5 and so that means that your thrust is counteracting your gravity element and increasing the velocity in a positive manner so what we need to do is we need to figure out where we're going to be able to put the code for um, thrust and the best best way of doing it is to put it directly after gravity so here we are this is where we're working out gravity so we need to put in how we're going to test that the thrust has been applied now in this particular case we you know we're going to test for a key and um, we're going to test for the space bar and then if the space bar is detected we're going to apply the thrust value to the code so and the way to do that is simply this so here is what I've prepared earlier and I will go through it so this is where gravity is done and what we're going to do is run through this bit this is what I've just put in so what we're, what we're doing is we're going to push the current y velocity value onto the the stack because we're going to store it away 
and then when we come to test it in the C64 we're going to apply a delay so it's going to slow down the processor we're going to test for a key now get key is a kernel jump vector of FFE4 and what that does it gets the, the, the next key in the keyboard buffer this is purely just for simulation use only so at the moment I'm pretending we've got zero from get key testing it as a space and if it's not equal to a space then we're going to bypass the entire thrust calculation so we're going to bypass it and come here we retrieve the vertical velocity from the stack and then we, kept, we do our limits check and then store the velocity but if it is a space then we're going to push uh, pull our vertical velocity from the stack we are then going to add the thrust and I need to put that in we need to clear the carry first then add the thrust value to it and then we're going to push it back on the stack and the reason because of that because it's going to come here and we're pulling it straight away so we put it back on the stack just to pull it pull it off and it's quicker than trying to do a, a, a load and a store um, so we need to we need to write the delay routine and the delay routine is basically just delays for 255 iterations and this will allow us to slow the computer down so we can interact with it so this is the delay so we're going to loop round 255 times and inside we're going to loop round 255 times so we'll save that and what we're going to do is we're going to look at it inside the debugger as in the CBM Studio debugger like we've done before so let me just make sure that it's set up to go into there there we go so we're going to debug it and basically what we're going to do is we're going to watch all the values that we need to watch yeah so I'm going to just move down here so we can see so here we go so we're at 9000 so we're going to jump and so we're setting up the system then we're adding the x values and then we're doing the y values and see here we go so we're subtracting so from the accumulator is 18 then we're sub subtracting gravity so that makes it 13 then we push it onto the stack there you go 13 has gone onto the stack and then we test for the key being pressed now at the moment I've hard, co hard coded it to be zero so thrust is not being applied so comparing it so thrust will not be applied it jumps past it it pulls it back off the stack and then we do our checks and then it applies it to Y velocity so Y velocity has now become 13 now the problem is we're going up so what I need to do with this is I'm going to stop this and we need to reset these values here so what we're going to do is we want to start at a Y position of 100 and a vertical velocity of 0 so it's like we've brought whatever it is we've just dragged up to say 100 meters high but it's it's been held until we let it go yeah so if we run this again so here we go so we've got our watches set up it's going to run through now so it's going to set the y position to be 64 there you go 64 which is decimal one, uh, 100 and X velocity well we're not bothered about that so we load the X position and we apply it then now we're going to load the Y velocity so currently Y velocity is zero so we're going to subtract gravity from it and as you can see it's gone to FB put it on the stack there we go it's on the stack check to see if we've pressed the thrust button no we haven't bring it back off the stack and then apply our checks and then apply it to the velocity which is done and we'll go around again so we're doing it again 
no thrust button has been pressed so it's going to go around and it, as you can see the Y position has come down it's now 54 and so we'll make it go around again just to show you so this is where we would test for the no thrust has been applied and it's gone down to 55 so our vertical our vert Y position is coming down because of the uh, vertical velocity um, increasing in a ne negative way. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pretend that we are pressing the uh, space key. So if I go to set a memory point and we want to set memory point 092F so 30 and we're going to set it to 20. There you go. So now we're going to say that we're pressing the space bar. So if I run around now, so here we go. So we're starting it again. So here comes the simulation. We load the accumulator with 20. So we've pushed, you know, the vertical velocity with gravity applied, which is EC onto the stack. We are now testing, have I pressed the space bar? Uh, yes, I have. Right, retrieve it back off the stack apply the thrust so the thrust is 10 so it's gone from EC to F6 and then we push it back onto the stack so we can pull it back off do the checks apply it to the Y position so the Y position is still going down because we're still in negative territory so if we go around again this so yes we've pressed the uh, thrust button again so we're going to apply the thrust to the the gravity value which is currently F1 so F1 plus 10 becomes FB uh, push it back onto the stack do the checks apply it to the Y velocity which means that we're gonna I think it's 3C now so it probably 39 or 3A or 37 it more even yeah or, yeah truth complement come round again so this is now the third iteration of us pressing the uh, thrust button so ver our vertical velocity is slowing down so here we go again so we're gonna bring it back add the thrust to it which is 10 so it's put it should put it back to zero which it has done and then we do our checks and then apply it to the vertical velocity and now it's not going to change the vertical velocity in any way because we've now, uh, sorry, our vertical position because we've now got zero velocity. So it's like it's hovering. So if we go round again, test for the thrust, add it to the, the uh, gravity value, should now increase to five. There we go. And now our, our vertical velocity is in a positive it's now in a positive territory so we're now starting to climb so I, our Y position should start increasing from 37 plus 5 it's going to be 3B I think 3C there you go so even our Y position is going so if we run it through again so add the thrust becomes OA so we've now got definite positive vertical velocity add 10 to our Y position so it's 3C and now it comes to 46 and that is a simple way of applying a thrust component to this uh, gravity physics engine and what we're going to do is this series is now going to continue because I will, I'll, I've been I've, it's been suggested that I embed this into some type of lunar lander game so what we're going to do is we're going to use this very simple module to govern the the lander through the um, game parameters by using this simple gravity physics engine with the thrust component in, in, in uh, embedded into it and just make a simple um, lunar lander game and hopefully 
this will give you an insight on how to apply this routine to that sort of situation. All right. So I hope you found this interesting, and and thanks to my friend who um, suggested the continuation of this video series and so hopefully we'll have another four or five videos um, to implement this gra simple gravity physics engine inside to, uh, a simple game using the 6502 and so with that I will see you in the next video take care bye for now